Washington are going to play on Saturday at 10.30 Eastern. Remember, Washington's Apple Cup with Washington State voided out due to COVID. Now to the NFL. The Baltimore Ravens have also been hit hard with the virus. At least five players and four staff members have now tested positive, according to Adam Schefter. The Ravens are 48 hours away, less than that now, against the Steelers for the Thursday game. Practice canceled today in Baltimore after all the new positives came in. So the Ravens roster stretched really thin here. Four key players have been placed on the COVID-19 reserve list. Running back J.K. Dobbins, Mark Ingram, linebacker Pernell McPhee, defensive tackle Brandon Williams. On top of that, they got a bunch of regular injury list guys who are on the report this week. ESPN's Ravens reporter Jamison Hensley on board with us now. This has to be a huge blow for the Ravens coming off a loss and then a short week to prepare, and now they're hit with this. How would you characterize the mood in Baltimore right now? Yeah, well, well Kenny, in talking to Coach John Harbaugh just a day ago, he said they don't have a frustration meter. And really, in talking to a lot of other players today, the Baltimore's mindset is they're just going to hit the problems when they arise and just make the best of it. And today, the Ravens placed their fourth player on the COVID reserve list in outside linebacker Pernell McPhee. And they understand that all of things had to go virtual today. That forced the cancellation of practice. But Kenny, that's kind of the new normal in Baltimore. For this entire month, the Ravens were in the, the NFL's intensive protocol for all but one week. So they are very comfortable, even though they have these challenges, they're very comfortable in this setting. How uncertain are things to actually play the game? We're just 48 hours away. Yeah, uh, for now, the NFL said there are no changes to the status of Thursday's game. And Baltimore, they're set to travel to Pittsburgh late tomorrow afternoon. And I've been told you can expect more players to be added to the COVID reserve list. Right now, what the process is, they're retesting some players just to make sure there are no false positives. But despite all of these challenges, the Ravens want to play this game because they've lost three of the last four games. And this represents Thursday night, national television, Thanksgiving night. This represents the chance for them to make a statement against the NFL's best team. And in talking to tight end Mark Andrews, he said, yeah, their backs are against the wall. They know people are counting them out but he's very excited to show the world what the Ravens can do. Oh, well, we hope it can come off and come off safely. Jameson, thanks for the report. All right, Ravens dealing with real life situation. Uh, some of you are involved in fantasy. Here's a couple notes on that. Ravens have three active running backs currently on the roster. All of them widely available in fantasy football leagues. Gus Edwards uh, figures to get the bulk of the work. He's rostered in just 14% of leagues. Justice Hill and fullback Patrick Ricard rostered in under 1% of the leagues. Dallas Cowboys strength and conditioning coordinator Marcus Paul was rushed to a local hospital early this morning after experiencing a medical emergency. He's 54, undergoing further medical tests at this time. Paul joined the Cowboys in 2018 as an assistant coach. He was named the strength and conditioning coordinator under Mike McCarthy's arrival as head coach. He played five years as a DB in the NFL with the Bears and the Buccaneers from 89 to 93, played college ball at Syracuse. The Cowboys canceled practice today and coaches' availabilities, but they did say in a statement the medical emergency is not coronavirus. We're joined again on the show by the best defensive player in the NFL. It's Aaron Donald. And Aaron, there's a saying at the moment that you don't want to be extra, right? But I'm curious on a Monday night game against a team that's got the kind of stars that they've got under the bright lights. How much extra juice does that provide to your really talented defense? Um, a lot. You know, anytime you're playing against a good team, you know, you, you always want to show that you're the best. So um, it, was a, it was a big challenge for us coming in this week. And I think guys stepped up, made plays and dominated. So we, we showed up. You all have played in the East a bunch, and you're done with that. I mean, it's a long trip to, to Tampa, and now you guys get to go back home and just – you're either at home or you're on the West Coast. I don't know if people get how significant that is. How would you frame that, Aaron? Um, it, it definitely um, – I wouldn't say – I think we did a good job as far as, you know, getting used to it and things like that. It definitely was tough, but um, you know, we stuck together. We had a good plan um, as far as what we needed to do to keep ourselves fresh and ready to play a game. So – um, it's it definitely good to be back at home on the West Coast and, um, you know, doing what we do. 
Your defense is something we talk about a lot. The offense, I think, when it cooks like it did tonight, you threw it a ton. But, I mean, to get to see that side of the ball get flowing the way they were, what does that do for this, the, the sort of overall sense of what you guys can be in these last couple months? That's what it's about. You know, I think it was a great team win. You know, I think, you know, we did things good on the defense. We made a couple little mistakes here and there. But, you know, the offense was there, made great plays. Special teams stepped up, made plays for us. So, um, that's what you get to do to win, to win games in this league, man. It, it's about um, playing as a team, sticking together in all three phases, making plays. And I think we did that today. Um, so we got a lot of film to, to watch and, and learn from it and get better. So I don't think they're going to leave without you, but I imagine you got a flight to catch. So go get the, uh, get on the plane, travel safely home, and Aaron, have a, thank, a happy Thanksgiving. I appreciate you making time for us. I appreciate you. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. Brought to you by Die Hard Batteries. Available at Advanced Auto Parts. Good one on Monday night. Rams and Buccaneers. Jared Goff threw the ball 51 times. 51 times for 376 yards. That's tied for the second most completions in a game in Monday night football history. The 39 completions on the 51 attempts. Cup and Woods, as we mentioned, were on the receiving end both. For double-digit grabs, they get a pick late. They win by four. Look, part, look forward to a, a visit every week with Ryan Clark, who is here now. And, Ryan, the Rams' offense was interesting to me, man. When they were cooking, they were going. <laughs> but then they bogged down for stretches, which allowed the Buccaneers to kind of to get back mm -hmm. in this game and tie it up. What did you make of the Rams' offense, particularly when it was sharp? <laughs> Well, you know, I thought they threw the ball way too much. I didn't think they would win if they went here, but they executed so well. And Sean McVay was much better than Todd Bowles was, but it was about the, di the diagram. It was about the scheme. Here you're going to see everybody blocked down and Gerald Everett, Everett come out of the other side. Watch the way that he manipulates the defense on the back and the underneath coverage wide open with all the space to the side. Easy throw for Jared Goff. And then next, we're going to see one of the biggest plays of the first half. This is actually the three points you can say they win the game by. You're going to get the tackle out. You're going to get...